Ernesto Almaniga from uh, TOB. Um, I'm going to talk about unit deletions in derived proofs. Now, derived proofs are proofs that are produced by set solvers. And um, they have some uh, interesting features. Probably the most interesting is that they work in a satisfiability preserving way, so the, the, the statements that are derived need not be consequences of the original premises, they just need to be consistent with it. Um, and that has some interesting consequences. So um, the general pipeline will work like this. I have a CNF formula, I give it to the solver, and the solver says, oh, this is unsatisfiable. So here's a DRAT proof. And that DRAT proof is given to a DRAT checker. Um, the DRAT checker will either accept it and say, oh, this is a correct proof, so the original formula is unsatisfiable. Or else it will reject it, and then we don't know anything about the, the, the original formula. Now, a DRAT proof uh, is expressed as a sequence of clause introductions and clause deletions. So it works in an incremental way. I start with the original formula, and then I can either introduce clauses that satisfy a requirement called RAT, which stands for Resolution Asymmetric Tautology, um, or else I can delete clauses, right? And, um, well, these two uh, operations have the property that they're satisfiability preserving. So every time that I apply either of these, uh, of these uh, instructions, what I obtain is something that is just as satisfiable as the previous uh, stage. So whenever I derive the uh, unsatisfiable clause, then I know that I'm done. Um, related to the previous point, right introduction is non-monotonic, meaning that if I am, uh, if I delete some clauses from my uh, from my formula, it might be the case that now I can derive more clauses by rat. This is something that is a bit uh, counterintuitive if you're thinking on uh, entailment, right, on, on deriving consequences. But if you're only deriving consistent statement, then, then this makes a lot of sense. And this interaction between deletion and write inferences is going to be the core of, uh, of the talk. Um, I'm going to focus on one specific kind of clause called unit. Uh, a clause is a unit if, I, if all literals bar one uh, are derived by unit propagation in the CNF formula. Now, uh, the, exp the specific definition doesn't matter for this talk, but um, these unit clauses are very relevant because they, um, they make a difference for two ways of understanding the original specification of a DRAT proof. So on the one hand, we have what I call specified DRAT. This was the original specification that was published in a paper in 2014 by uh, Oily and others. And on the other hand, there's operational DRAT, which is the name I give to whatever it is that state-of-the-art DRAT checkers are actually checking. Uh, so there are two mainly used uh, DRAT checkers. One is DRAT Trim by Martin Holle and Nathan Wetzler, and the other one is DRAT Gen by Peter Lamet. Um, and the difference between these two proof systems is that in specified DRAT, whenever I see a, a clause deletion, I actually apply it. In operational DRAT, when I see a a clause deletion, first I check if it's a, a unit clause. And if it's a unit clause, then I ignore it. I just pretend it was not there. Um, both are sound proof systems. And what this means is that whenever I check a proof and the proof is correct according to that specification, then the original formula wasn't satisfiable. So both of them are sound. I just need to pick one of them, right? Are they the same? Not really. So discrepancies exist. You can come up with constructed proofs that, um, that are very short, like five lines long, and they're correct in one uh, flavor, but not in the other. But it's, it gets even worse. So um, currently uh, in SAT competitions, or what this is what we found in 2018, uh, about 60% of the proofs generated by SAT solvers in the competition are correct or classified as correct by the, um, by the checkers, and in fact correct under the operation of the red, but according to the specification, they're incorrect. So um, 
there are several practical issues with this, uh, with this operational directive, with a proof system that is implicitly, uh, say, specified by the, by the implementation. Um, I will refer you to the paper that I wrote with Armin Bire on uh, 2018 to see what are the, 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 these practical issues they have to do with uh, in-processing techniques, but there's no time here to, to discuss those. But what we actually found last, uh, so two years ago in FMCAD, was a method to check in a, in a relatively efficient way um, specified DRAF proofs. It turns out that this is not that simple, so there are some issues in there, uh, but we didn't get nowhere close to the efficiency of, uh, of the state-of-the-art DRA checkers that work with the operational flavor. On the other hand, we found this result, this kind of surprising result, right, that most proofs generated by such solvers in the competitions, they're not quite complying with the specification. So uh, uh, there was this question whether was there a bug in our checker for the specified flavor? We didn't know because it's not that easy to check a single uh, inference in a DRAF proof. So why do we keep using this operational DRAF if there are these practical issues that I mentioned before? Well, on the one hand, most ad solvers generate operational DRAF proofs. And that is because, well, all efficient checkers check operational DRAF proofs. And they check operational DRAF proofs because most such solvers are generating operational DRAF proofs and so on. So we have an egg and a chicken problem. Um, if we want to solve this, we need to actually tackle both problems at the same time. And this is what we do in this paper. So on the one hand, we're going to patch the SAT solvers so that these spurious deletions that make the difference. So the, the SAT solver is introducing deletions that are never intended to be applied uh, so that these deletions are avoided. On the other hand, we're going to develop a specified DRAT checker that actually uh, has a competitive performance. So it performs on par with the uh, operational DRAT checkers that are out there. And on the other hand, we're going to check with, cert uh, with um, certificates that um, the rejections that we got uh, are actually correct. So we're going to do basically the opposite that is usual. We're going to certify the incorrectness of a proof. Um, all right, so let's start with the, with the issue with the SAT solvers. So um, I need to, to introduce just a bit of how the SAT solver works inside. On the one hand, we have a data structure, which is just the class database uh, stores the clauses that are currently in my CNF formula, on the, on, on the other hand, I have the trail. The trail keeps track of the literals that are uh, implied by unit propagation, which is the main uh, uh, inference technique in SAT solving, uh, by the current CNF formula. So I have a database and then a trail with different literals. Uh, for every literal, I also take a note of which was the clause that propagated that literal. Uh, Whoops, sorry, wrong, wrong button. Um, right, so what happens if I want to delete this clause? Well, what happens is that I'm going to delete the literal X2 that got propagated by C4, right? Because that will not be propagated anymore. And maybe some others that used X2 to propagate, right? So I will end up in this situation, for example, right? Okay, now, if we go to Minisat, which is a very influential solver that uh, was written in 2003. Um, and every, well, not every, but many SAT solvers after that uh, were based on that, uh, on Minisat. Uh, it includes one method called solver remove satisfied. And this method uh, removes clauses in the database which are already satisfied by the trail. And the rationale is, well, these are satisfied uh, my trail never decreases, so I, can, I may as well just remove them from the memory. Now, the interesting thing is the propagated literals uh, that, that those clauses trigger uh, are not removed from the trail, which means that uh, the solver actually behaves as though the, the clause was never deleted from the, from the formula. It's just deleted from the memory, but it's, it's still kept somehow alive in the invariance, right? Um, however, uh, the way that, that 
these solvers are producing the proofs. The uh, unit deletion is actually emitted, right? Um, now that will be a problem because now I need to apply that deletion on the on the on the checker side when I'm checking the proof. But the clause is still intended to be there. So the way that the the DIRA checkers do this is just by ignoring that deletion because it's a unit deletion. So I just ignore it. Um, so to to solve this issue, the, the the solution is very simple. Just don't don't emit that deletion at all. Uh, and that solves the issue for purely CDCL solvers. That brings the proof that will be emitted to the common fragment between specified and uh, operational DRAC. However, that uh, I mean, with that uh, with that situation, we could just say, oh, okay, just use the current the currently uh, existing solvers, and that's it. Uh, sorry, checkers, and that's it. But the problem is that uh, when we are using in processing techniques, we may still need to. Uh, to delete one clause that is a unit, right? And for that, we cannot use operational direct checkers because they don't do that at all. They will just act as if the, the, the deletion was not there. Um, so let's go to the checker side. Uh, so the, the issue with unit deletions is that they can shrink the, the set of literals that are implied by unit propagation. Uh, this is very analogous to the trail that I just showed for SAT solvers. And in operational DRAT checkers, well, we have this issue that the internal invariance of, that, of those checkers, they actually depend on a monotonic growth of the trail. So the trail can never decrease, or else the, the invariants just are broken and then the solver doesn't work at all. So the checkers, sorry. And this is true for DRAT trim, which is the most, the most commonly used uh, checker, but also for DRAT gen, which is um, one that improved over DRAT trim. On the other hand, uh, the existing specified DRAT checkers, which I should say it in, in singular, uh, because back then there was only one, it was rupee, um, perform worse than operational DRAT checkers. This is work that we did two years ago. It performs about one order of magnitude worse and uh, well, we kind of had the intuition back then that this was mostly due to not having implemented some improvements, some optimizations in Rupee. Uh, that this was not a problem with specified direct checking and specified direct checking can be could be done at the same performance as operational direct checking. So what we did in this paper was implementing a DRAT checker rate that you can check in, in, this, uh, in this website. And um, well, the, the we implemented all the state-of-the-art optimizations, backwards checking, trail preprocessing, and core first propagation. And with that, we actually came on par with existing DRAT checkers. In fact, we do better than the, the, standard, of the, the, the standard checker uh, DRAT trim. Um, right, so we have solved the second issue. There's a third issue, which is that there's still, so with the data from those experiments, we figure out that the, so we ran first the experiments so two years ago on the SAT solvent competition. It was 60% uh, of incorrect proofs, well, incorrect according to the specification. Um, and now in the last SAT solving competition, we're up to 77%. Um, so how do we know that this is not a bug in rate? Which could be the case because, um, well, checking a single inference step in, uh, in a DRAT proof, that requires already unit propagation, which to be performed efficiently needs very complex data structures. It cannot quite be done in a, in a certified way. Uh, so what we did is reusing some old knowledge that we had. So uh, two years ago, we figured out that using some three-valued semantics uh, and some weird notion of when a clause is satisfied, we could actually uh, model when a clause is a rat. This this consequence, sorry, this um, notion of uh, that 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 the checkers use for consequence, right, and, or derivability. And in particular, we found out that a clause C is a rat uh, with respect to a formula S whenever F together with the negation of C is 
unsatisfiable with respect to those semantics. Now, checking if a, if a model, uh, checking a model for those semantics is really fast. So we can use a model as a witness that the clause is not a rat. So we can use that as a, certifi uh, as a certificate that, um, that our inference step in our proof is actually uh, incorrect. And with that, we developed something called six certificates. We run it over uh, our, the instances that failed in our experiments, and all of them are rejected and correctly so, according to the uh, to the certificate and uh, to the certificate certificates. So to conclude this talk, uh, SATs overs are introducing spurious and unnecessary deletions in in direct proofs. But this is easy, as easy to fix as just don't, don't do that. Um, the, the second part is that, well, the, these, these DRAT checkers that everyone is using actually deviate from the original specification uh, when you need deletions occur in the proof, which is quite often. Uh, but this is unnecessary too. We can just implement the methods that we developed with, uh, for Rupee together with the standard um, optimizations that, uh, that, that are out there in uh, existing uh, direct checkers, and this will perform just very well. And finally, uh, there's this issue that there's no easy way to check a single failed rat inference, but if you're checking a proof, you can actually generate some extra information, a witness, and with that witness, together with some three-value semantics, we, you can actually produce a certificate that the proof was incorrect. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Questions? Um, hi. So hi. Um, for your benchmarks, were they only on the problems where every both it checks in both checkers? Sorry, again? Uh, for your benchmarks, um, you showed having speed ups over the red trim. Uh, I'll go back. Right. Yeah. Here? So like, what well, these after? So so I mean, some of these proofs are going to be wrong, right? Yeah, sure. This is yeah. only over the proofs that were correct according to all checkers. Okay. Because otherwise, yeah, otherwise uh, the times change completely. As soon as we find an incorrect inference, we stop. Okay. So yeah. Any more questions? So uh, I was wondering what what's mm -hmm. the reaction so far from the SAT community? You community, I presume you have already right. had some contacts with so them. So uh, the the on the one hand, they were uh, they were originally kind of surprised by these results about the sixty percent of proofs not being correct according to the specification because they're they're correct according to a different specification that was never published. Uh, but um, so far, the, the issue is that these in-processing techniques, they, most of them, they don't have a proof generation procedure. We suspect that also because some people tried and maybe they failed because of this uh, unit deletion issue, so at some point you stop trying to feed it to, to the rest room. Um, yeah, so on the other hand, most ad solvers were generating proofs for these operational direct checkers, so no one was quite making the effort. I think that Armin Bire, uh, actually made an effort to make the, the solver um, CADICAL actually complying with both. Uh, yeah, and we hope that now with this fix, um, we, we, I know that uh, Marijn Hodelo was actually quite pleased to see that now we have fixed both sides. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hopefully now the, the SAC community engages a bit more. So, so, so yeah, if, if there are no more questions, yeah, sure. I guess we can we can stop. And uh, b before that, I, I wanted to say that uh, for lunch we're going to the eighth floor. Okay, thank you. Again. Thank you.